Hey, how's it going? My name is Anthony Gray. Welcome to another installment of Grayscale. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm going to make an equ my equivalent to liquid uh, white. I'm using vegetable glycerin and white paint. Okay, all I did was pour my glycerin into some soft white craft paint. Okay, and I'm stirring it up in here with my two inch flat brush. And as if you you know, you don't really need too much of this stuff. Okay, and I'm gonna just pour it all on here. What I got is 11 by 14, um, it's actually uh, canvas paper. All right. It's got the patterns, the threaded patterns of canvas paper. Now this will have the same effect pretty much as if you put glycerin on here, but you just added the white paint to it. Glycerin is a, one of the main ingredients in in, in uh, acrylic paint, so you're not doing any real harm. Like I say, a thin coat of it. You know that little finger press, finger print test thing? Something like that. All right, you don't need too much of this stuff at all. <coughs> and I'm just rinsing off my brush. Do a, um, there was a painting that I did on my f Facebook channel that was uh, really simple to do. Not very difficult. And I guess I'm going to try it out here. And basically, what you're going to do is emulate sunlight going through a group of trees or whatnot. And the sunlight being the center, and it pans out to the dark on the sides. All right. <coughs> so, uh, what I am going to do though, that's a little Same. different two inch uh, flat brush here. It's just a craft, uh, a painter's brush. You, you know, paint this window sills with. And you can go here in the center. Okay, just like that. Just on the center. Uh, dark color going with this so I'm going to go into my raw umber I'm gonna use a little raw umber and the alizarin crimson kind of dark darken it up yet still keep it somewhere within the family of the uh, colors let's say I want um, oh I have the tree from right here and I'll angle just upward like that. Have it one crooked one like this. I'll widen it out a little bit. Something like that. I'll get it a little thicker here. There. Something like that. For one. And maybe I'll have one a little straighter going up this way. I'll turn the brush around. I got more color on the other side. 
just like so. Very effective. Take the same, let's get some more dark. Take the same thing. You take it and you go this way with it, angle that way. And you're gonna do, you're just gonna continue straight with this one, just like that. Just like so. We're gonna get some more umber, some more crimson. We mix that up together. Still the same uh, one inch brush. Get some glycerin, loosen up the paint a little bit. And you can feel with your brush, the paint starting to loosen up and it, it kind of slides around a little bit better. Okay, we'll put we'll put one a little, a little higher up. We'll put one right up in here. Just like that. Straight up like that. Actually you can have him come straight down. Like so. Okay. We'll have him go kind of not extremely crooked, but somewhere up there like that. He needs to be a little darker. No problem. Add more paint. Get a little more umber here. A little more crimson. And a touch of the glycerin, just to darken it up a little bit. Loosening up the paint again. Cause I want them a wee bit, a wee bit darker than that. Make them a little thicker too, there we go. Just like that. And we're gonna go a slight curve inside. Just try your best just to match it. All right. It needs to be a little darker than that. Just like that. All right. Something like that. So, now we got a little bit of that established. I'm just cleaning off my brush here. Wiping the water off. I'm going to add a little bit of this. I'm going to still work with the colors I do have. I'm going to get a little bit more ochre, even though I might not really need this. But I'm going to get some background trees in there. They're just going to be chilling out in the back, in the back back there. Just relaxing. I'm going in a really small amount of ochre, um, of umber. Put it into the okay. oak. I, I just want, you know, these trees back there. Just a little, you know, you can see a few of them back there like that. It kind of... Different sizes. Okay. Just getting a little more. Just like that. Remember, this stuff dries flat. So it kind of fades away. Get some crossing in front of each other like that. They're slimmer, they're smaller. Um, get them coming back here, all up in here. Just getting us a little bit more. I'm just doing a really quick mix because you just want them a little darker than the background. So you can establish a little bit of some shapes and stuff. Like so. You can group them closer together what not just like that okay it's just a little something hanging around back there all right we can go a little bit into the uh, a little bit into the crimson now the crimson I'm adding a little ochre in the crimson so I still want to keep the yellowish kind of tinge to it And you know, you put a few of them guys back here. Just like that. Just continuing it on. They don't have to be totally, in, these guys aren't in detail or anything. Just like that. So you just continue some of that mix back there. I'm gonna take some crimson, just dark crimson. I can kind of pull this off because the crimson is kind of light in the back. You throw a couple of the red ones back there. Like this. See that? Just getting a little more crimson. No medium. Just a crimson. Because they're just uh, slight. Just 
just like that back there. Magic, magic couple. Just like that. So you got all sorts of little stuff happening in there, okay? All right. So it's not that painful. So far, so good. All right. A small um, palette knife here. Let's see if I can get a pretty decent one. I think this one might work for all intents and purposes. I'm going into my soft white. And I'm just going to get a slight touch of the soft white. Yeah, you should be able to see it in the light that there. That's about all I need. Even this might be too much. So I'm going to wipe a little bit off of, on my, my rag. I just need a little bit. Okay, and we're going to get some interesting patterns going with these guys. Like that. Become like little birch trees or whatnot. Get another another touch of white. The paper, remember, it's got little patterns in it. So it'll help you. Put a little curve to them. Go up here a little bit. And we're going to continue some of that on over here. I'm just using, I'm just tapping the uh, the blade. It's a nice little cutesy project if you want to do for your <coughs> class, if you got little paint classes. Okay, like so. Kind of like stylized little birch trees or whatnot. And you do the same thing here. Alright, this is the white with the glycerin on it. It's, it's uh, soft white. It would be, um, gotta go a little flat. A little curve to them. Just like that. Same thing down here, a couple of touches. If it mixes in with the brown, that's that's fine too. I'm just wiping the excess off of my palette knife onto my little towel here. Just like that. Okay. And you're going to mirror that down below. It doesn't have to be exact. Your eyes are filling everything else. I think you guys can kind of see how this is gonna turn out a little bit. Like I say, very simple, very effective and attractive way to um, get your group into one using the palette knife if they so choose, and yourself, just like that. Now, without even really trying, you can see how the ground is kind of established. Right, we're gonna establish the the, the ground. Okay. Now you kind of already know where most of it is, so we're gonna establish some uh, some grass in there like that. Okay, and we're gonna put the land up in here. Establish some some actually establish some grass in the back back there, which brings a lot of this to the foreground. Somewhere around in there, and we're gonna go right across like that. And you're gonna take some of this, and you're gonna you're gonna pull some of that down like that. Pull some of it down. Establish a quick reflection. You're going into the green and just you're just gonna pull it down. Just like so. See that? Alright, now you just establish. You can go a little, down a little further if you need. It really up to you. Just like that. So now you've already established some type of reflection down there. So you separated it with the darks got some reflections going on. Now I went 
across with these trees, these trees are already set further in the back. These are towards us here, a little closer. Okay, let's play with a little highlight with that. I'm going in, just tapping a little bit of yellow ochre onto my brush. I'll tap in some, some cutesy little highlights in there. Just a tap. Just like that. Just like so. I can also brighten that up just a little bit. Hold on. For me, I'm just going into my white. I'm just tapping my brush into the white. I'm going back into the ochre. Just establish a highlight. Okay. And very lightly. Well, let's establish the highlight right here in the center. Because that's where all the glow is coming. Right here in the center like that. So we'll establish it right here in the middle. Just like that. We'll leave those alone on the side. We'll establish it right there. Okay, and I'm going to clean off my brush. This is a very, very simple painting. Very effective painting if you want to try to relay mood. All right. I'm just cleaning off the brush here. You can teach kids this painting. People who are a little bit intimidated with um, the palette knife. You can teach them this. Okay. Let's go with the palette knife. I'm going back into the white. This the white that has the, uh, the really soft white. Okay. And all I need really is the edge. Okay. All I need is the edge. And you're going to cut right across. Cut across. Cut across. Just like that. Cut on across. Right on across your pitch. Right on like that. You just established a quick water line. That separates um, the land from where your water is. Okay, and that's all you're doing. And while you're at it, you can just tap a few little bits of water line in there. Just a, a few. Keep it as horizontal as you can, please. Just like that. Get them smaller towards there smaller towards the back a little bit longer as you come forward so as you come forward you can kind of extend it a little bit come right across like that but keep it as straight as possible okay it's like this see how effective this is keep it straight as you can very 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 simple to do come right on across I'm just wiping right across just using white paint going cutting right across and keep it like I say as straight as possible you know if you can okay some of this will be covered up probably but that's okay but now you just established all right your foreground your middle ground stuff in the background back there very very uh simple process let's do something with uh, the trees a little bit let's take a smaller flat brush this is a half inch okay we're going to add some dark to one side of the trees here i'm going to glaze that on uh, we're working excuse me we're working with acrylic paint okay i'm just getting a little bit of just half one side is dark the other side will have um, nothing else on it i'm just using the dark side of the brush and just on one side one side you're just gonna get it dark on one side of the of the tree like that all right and you, you might just only have to go over it once like i'm doing only on one side of the tree get a nice little fade of color only on one side of the tree just like that make sure the one side is dark the other other one kind of just like that and you do it only on the ones in the front right here just one half of the tree it's got the glycerin on it so it should just glide across the paper you can go back and forth okay and just one side of the tree so it gives the tree volume very very simple painting very effective okay it looks like you're doing a lot more than what it actually is. And that's kind of what you want to portray. Your little, little illusion there. 
Look at that. Now you have solid trees there. And yes, you can come over here, add a little bit of that to your trees down here. If you so choose, sure. Get your trees kind of even there. Now, obviously I would have did this before I added the uh, the lines, but um, we can always repair, put those lines back. I'm just getting some more dark and we're gonna, there we go. Just like that. But you can always, the lines can always come back. Don't worry about the lines. Right? Just like so. And sometimes you might not even notice it. Okay. All right, very simple. Very quick painting. Really try it out for yourself. And you may find that you like it uh, quite a bit. Like I said, nice little craft project to do. Let's take a script liner brush. There we go. Uh, bring it up kind of closer here to you guys. There. It's a script liner. A little thin guy. All right. And I'm going to dip into water. And I'm going into my dark again, but I'm trying to get the dark to be of an inky consistency. All right, you need this to um, be, you need the paint to be a little runny. Because we're going to do tiny little branches, skinny branches here and there. Now this will help sell some of that light back there. Okay, and we're just going to, we'll pick one side here. And we're just going to come around like so. Now get plenty of, of paint it runs up of paint quickly just like that and just little Y strokes here and there Now, I'm going to get a touch more glisten because I want to loosen up the dark paint I already have on my palette. And you get yourself a, a flat brush that has a very crisp, sharp edge to it. Okay. See that edge? No strings, no little stragglers. Nice, nice edge to it. And maybe you can thicken up a couple of these branches like that. Just like that. Thicken a couple. Make a few of them a little thick. How about this one coming out like that and maybe coming around like so. Okay. So you can make some of these branches a little broad. Um, this guy is kind of in front of everybody. So we'll, uh, we'll extend this one. We'll have him come off, turn, go right in front of the other guy like that. And kinda give him a nice thick branch there going across. Now that already sets those two guys way back. Just adding that. Okay. And the more you add, um, you're going to put highlights on them and all that good stuff. Okay. And actually that branch is way too, way too high. This one isn't down here, down below. Just like that. Okay. It's like that. That branch is too high. It's down there somewhere. All right. Now that we've established that, let's go back into my ombre. I got plenty of phthalo blue. We're going to add some uh, foreground in there. Okay. Now, I'm just going to get some interesting shapes going on in here without to totally destroying everything. But right up in here, just some interesting patterns. And if you don't like the way the patterns are turning out, you can always kind of change it or tilt the brush a little bit. 
in that, like this. You just, you kind of want some interesting stuff happening, but I don't want to totally get rid of, like you can go dark, leave a patch of color, and you just go back, go higher in there. But you can leave a patch of color in there, a little, little piece of the color going through some of those guys. I'm just giving a nice little push and get some extra. And what you want really is a interesting there, interesting shapes. Kind of portray the wild foliage going around. Just like that, but you need it fairly dark. Alright, that's about all I need really of that color for this brush. I'm just wiping off the, the color. That's my one inch brush. And then put a hardware store brush. And I just took a pair of sharp scissors and I just cut it at an angle. There, you can see the angle. That's all I did. Okay, let's go back into my script liner brush. I'm getting a little bit of water now. Water into the script liner brush. Just water. I'm twirling it around, I'm getting it to an inky consistency. We're gonna put some um, cattails in there. All of these little things help, help, help sell believability in your painting and right from the dark bush in here we can just very lightly see that i'm gonna get some more water the inkier you got it and the more of it the more of it can fill into your brush and the bigger your cattails can be if you want them that size okay you can really have them come on out there okay i'm just getting more water mixing it with the paint twirling it around there. I'm going to curve it around. These these guys got a little, little body to them there. Like that. You don't have to have them as wide. And there's different sizes of script liners also. But we're going to go in the other direction with some of these. Group them together. Have them, have them colliding and crossing each other. Okay. That all helps sell your painting. Okay. You can usually tell when your brush is running out of ink because like I say, the paper will grab it and you'll start having breaks. Okay. Let's play with just a few um, highlights on the on the on the bushes themselves. I'm going to use a little bit of, of what I made here. I'm going to dip into my white, which has the medium in it. Go into a little bit of this dark, using only the tip of the brush, just a slight tip, and, it, and obviously the paint is thinner than what I put on. And we're going to just touch a light touch, just a, a little light touch like that. You can come down here and some. All you need is a touch now. See? And you move move around. Turn your brush around a little bit if you got to. I'm going down here where it's really dark. Getting some more. And it's just a touch. A touch and just leave it be. And you can have one come around like that. Just like this. Alright. That's basically it. Okay. And there's your painting. Very effective painting that you can do very simple <laughs> this is definitely a painting for beginning students and what have you not a very complicated painting at all I'm gonna get a little bit of white here put it on my brush and I'm gonna sign this but I'd like to thank you for uh, watching this uh, short demonstration um, any comments leave below I think my my name already came across the screen right about now. I'm just putting in my signature. There we go. Peel off the tape. Now I'm using, besides this uh, 11 by 14 um, canvas paper, I'm using uh, masking tape uh, for this. The reason why I'm using the masking tape, 
because it gets such a sharp cleaner line and like I said I did experiment here using a little bit of a uh, of, uh, glycerin, glycerin mixed in with my craft paint to give me the equivalent of, of liquid liquid uh, liquid white which is why the um, which is why the uh, the alizarin crimson which is a very deep color came out uh, so pinkish red All right. the reason why I use this uh, clear tape is because of the super sharp crisp look at that now, this is just a preference you don't nece necessarily have to use this this is just a preference of mine this is what I like okay and as you can see it gives you a super sharp crisp line like that you can't beat a crisper line than that this is just why I use the tape I can use it on canvas too all right but I mean you can't beat the sharpness and plus with the medium it doesn't seem to soak through okay so um well there it is very effective very simple I could have put branches or um, leaves in here but if I do put leaves in here it would set the trees back it would set everything further back right now it's kind of close enough actually very effective very simple um, type of painting you got the little reflection down here the reflections of the grass the trees you got the water lines going through it you got a little bit of foreground going going in here okay and nothing's really dead center everything's on either side okay the only thing really is center is, is coated by the bunch of the, the uh, trees in the background which are um, kind of hidden by the glow back there extremely effective very simple painting this is a great craft project for uh, beginning students okay um, not difficult at all to do once again my name is Anthony Gray this is Grayscale and I hope that you learned a little something uh, from this or you can you can add on to it. I'd love to see uh, your renditions of it. And uh, until next time.